What's up, guys? Jason here again on another Wicked Wednesday, and um, today I'm going to review a film called Shrom, and this film was recommended to me by um, Dante, or his uh, YouTube username on here is Stoned Swede, and I'll uh, post a link somewhere to his channel, so you can go check his channel out, he does cool videos and stuff, but yeah, he recommended this to me the other day, I forgot what movie we were talking about, and you know, I'd heard of this one before, I think I'd heard Mike, uh, former of the 81 Oak Ridge channel, talk about it. And, uh, you know, I put it on my list, and I, I really didn't try to pursue it too hard until he told me about it. So I went ahead, and I was able to find it for rental through a Blockbuster. And I picked it up, and I just finished watching it, and um, I rather enjoyed it. It's a, a 1993 film directed by, I'm trying to pronounce his name here, guys, bear with me, Jorg Horg Boot. Boot Garut, Boot Garrett. I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, but uh, the German fellow. Obviously, you guys, you guys know him. He's the guy who directed uh, Necromantic, of course. Um, but yeah, this film follows uh, Schramm, obviously, and he's a serial killer known as a Lipstick Killer in Germany. And he, um, this film is is really odd in the way it's it's set up. It's not chronological at all, and it's really an arty type film. It's not really meant to be understood on any kind of level. It's just a lot of um, I don't know what's the best way to describe it. It's the uh, the tagline of this film in in English is like "Into the Mind of a Serial Killer" or something like that, and that's a really really accurate way to describe it. It really makes you feel like you're um, kind of uh, brought into the madness of a serial killer, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, is what I really enjoyed about it. It you know really made me understand, or not understand, but kind of see what, what the thought process there. Um, but the film opens with Schramm, and he uh, there's this these uh, some sort of crazy. Uh, Christian folks that, that come to the door and they, you know, say, you know, have you have you accepted uh, Jesus Christ in your life and stuff like that? And he, you know, he invites them in and offers them a drink and he uh, he you know, kills them. And what he does is he uh, he's called the lipstick killer because he puts lipstick on people and uh, takes pictures of them and then uses them later to uh, pleasure himself. But uh, yeah, he he does that. He kills these folks, and instead of uh, this is a really smart idea. Instead of actually trying to clean up the crime scene, he just paints over it. He just paints over the blood, and, and that way it just looks white again. So <laughs> I guess if you're a lazy serial killer, you just paint over the blood. But um, as he's doing that, he falls off of the ladder and uh, you know hits his head, and then the rest of the movie is kind of going back over. Um, some th some things that had happened over the past few days, and you know, it's it's basically just a really crazy mix of, of things that had happened. They're not in any kind of order. You kind of have to put the pieces together yourself. But he does that, and um, it shows him. You know, he has a relationship with a lady that lives across the hall. I believe she's a prostitute, and you know, he's really infatuated with her and. They go out on a date, and he, you know, they're they're having some drinks, and he slips some some sort of a drug into her drink, and she passes out, and he you know, he uh, dresses her up and takes pictures of her while she's unconscious, and uh, you know, pleasures himself to her as she's unconscious, and that's a, an ongoing thing throughout the movie. It's crazy, perverse. Uh, sexual appetite is a very very odd fellow obviously uh, some sort of obsessive compulsive he has the need to clean constantly and just has lots of weird fears I know he's telling her one time that he uh, used to have dreams all the time when he was a kid that he would uh, feel down where his where his genitals are and it would just be smooth his genitals wouldn't exist and another one of the, the things that it, that it shows is him going through a a process. Well, it, at first it shows him working out, or you know, I think he's like doing sit-ups, and he's wearing uh, his underwear, and it's a, a big 
blood stain on the crotch area and you kind of wonder you know what the hell happened there and it shows you later on that what he actually does is he uh, he has an uncircumcised penis and he nails nails into the foreskin which is some sort of I guess sexual pleasure for him but uh, I think that was before I'd uh, heard of this movie I know a lot of people talked about the uh, or before I you know watched this movie I'd heard a lot of people talk about the graphic scenes in this movie and you know how hard it is to watch and, and you know on and on I really didn't think it was hard to watch at all I uh, I don't know I guess I just <laughs> shows what kind of sick person I am but um, I really wasn't disturbed by anything the most disturbing scene to me was when he it actually shows him uh, like having sex with an inflatable uh, doll or it's not a full doll it's like a half torso but it's really odd and bizarre and I didn't really care for that very much but um, yeah, another scene it shows is, is him going to the dentist and they actually extract his eyeball in the dentist, in the dentist's office and it shows that in full detail and that's a cool scene, lots of cool gore in there. And uh, he's, he's like haunted by this like, it's like a tooth vagina that follows him around and <laughs> it's like, like he'll open a drawer and it'll be there just like chilling, like making noises and stuff. It's kind of it's kind of funny and creepy at the same time, but um, yeah, I really enjoyed this. If you're a big fan of gore and stuff like that, um, I'd say check it out. Uh, yeah, I was definitely pleased with it. I do think uh, Necromantic is a much better film, in my opinion. Um, but that's just my opinion. I know a lot of folks love this film, but um, I did like it. It really reminded me of uh, Maniac a lot, because it had that real gritty kind of feel to it. Of course, not nearly as good as Maniac, in my opinion, but um, it just had that really gritty feel to it, which was cool, really added to it, really made you feel dirty, and, you know, um, lots of really cool camera techniques. Um, that was probably my favorite thing about the movie, was some of the unique camera techniques that the director used, and uh, yeah, cool gore in there. Um, Oh, there was one cool scene. He has this, uh, I guess, a phobia of losing his leg. I don't know if he's actually lost his leg or if he just has a phobia of losing it, but he keeps having these dreams where he wakes up and his leg is, like, severed, and it shows it shows his severed leg. That's a really cool-looking scene. The, the gore effects are really cool on that. But um, just really bizarre film and really, you know, helps you dive into the mind of a serial killer and it's actually not based on a true story this guy's not a real serial killer i thought he was but it's actually loosely based on an american serial killer um, but um not the not the american serial killer that's called the lipstick killer this is a different one um that's another thing i was kind of confused about but uh, yeah check it out guys if, if you if this sounds like something you might enjoy check it out and thanks for watching